Hello everyone, my name is Starletta King and for this assignment um, we were responsible for doing a women's and gender studies video uh, project. Um, for my project I chose to focus on how social media is changing and it's how it's impacting um, the modern feminist world. Um, so before I begin I want to say that when I started this uh, project um, we are assigned to do three scholarly articles for um, for this assignment and I wanted to start off by doing some general research from the internet just to see what maybe some um, research that I could find on news sites or you know just different blogs that people were posting before I actually got into um, the scholarly portion so um, while doing this research I came up in found a lot of examples to support um, my topic, which again is how social media is changing uh, the feminist world. Um, so just a couple of different events that has taken place over the last couple of years um, that ties in with social media. Um, so hashtags are a very big part of um, social media. And as far as um, women and being able to speak out, they're able to use those hashtags on Facebook, Twitter, or any other social sites like Tumblr as well. So I was doing, um, looking and doing some research on MSNBC News. And on that site, um, it talked about how women was, um, how women were protesting um, during the abortion period for the abortion bill in Texas. And this was in 2013. And a lot of women said on this um, news site that, you know, they wanted to get out to be able to protest and to actually be there, um, but they could not. But they confided in social media and they said that being able to get online and to protest and use these hashtags, they felt like their voice was being heard just as much as it would be if um, if they would have been present. Um in 2014, um, this was the year that um, hashtag feminism finally reached the breaking point. This is when, I mean, hashtags have been used for a while now, but this is when um, women have really stepped it up and started, you know, voicing their opinions and uh, putting their feelings out there towards whatever protest or whatever issue um, that may be being faced at the time. Um, I also came across and found out that, you know, women often confide in these hashtags because um, they're able to share their everyday life stories or um, they get to give their input on sexism and violence that um, are against women in general. Um, and so I would like to say overall that I found this very interesting that, you know, I see hashtags being used every day, but I didn't know how, um, how much these hashtags impact um, society and you know people's voice being heard so once I started doing research for scholarly articles I did find an article um, called the impact of the media exposure on self-esteem and body satisfaction um, and I thought this article was very interesting because it pretty much talked about how you know, society gives off this certain image that most women feel that they have to um, sustain or, you know, they have to look up to as if this is the right body or the perfect body that you're supposed to have. Um, in this article, they talked about how Victoria's Secret changed their uh, perfect body um, slogan uh, because they were advertising, a lot of people were complaining about them advertising um, these very thin women um, and mainly mostly white models as well. So that was a really big thing, which I know growing up, I've always um, watched the Victoria's Secret um, fashion show every year. And when I would watch that, um, you know, those models would be um, kind of discouraging in a sense to me because... I would always look at it as that's the ideal and that's how I'm supposed to look or, you know, I have to be this skinny to be a model. So, um, yeah, this article talked about how that impacted people and how um, 
big Victoria's uh secret had to change their slogan and you know they had to um try to bring some type of change to that image um and now also in this article it talked about in 2013 the organization Women Action in the Media, which is known as WAM, launched a campaign target um, that was targeted towards Facebook. And it was for the company to change their policy as far as what images they allow people to upload on Facebook. Now, I honestly think that this was a good um, campaign that was actually launched because there are lots of things that, you know, we see on social media and you know, sometimes those things can be, um, it can just be discriminating. It can be, um, you know, it can kind of change the image that you have in your head that you, as, as far as a woman, what you should put out there and how you should portray your body. Now, I know personally, um, growing up, I used to always see um, girls my age or women that were older than me, you know, they were posting pictures of their body and um, they were kind of half naked or they would show all of their curves and, you know, just doing different things to kind of get attention from different people. And I used to always feel as though like, you know, do I have to do this to get the same type of attention or the same type of likes or, you know, just those type of um, self-esteem or just questions that you ask yourself. So um, I thought that was quite interesting because still to this day, these are issues that uh, we see on social media. Um, another thing that I found really interesting um, from a scholarly article called Gender Differences in Using Social uh, Network was um, they talked about the March on Washington, uh, which was back in November of 2016. Um, they talked about how a lot of women gathered from all over, you know, to come to D.C. and to protest and march for their rights. And I thought that... Um, that was quite interesting how they already um, indicated in this uh, article that there was nearly 200,000 um, people that were there for the march. So just think about how many people um, was present. And then just think about those people that weren't able to get out there and to actually protest, but were able to use those hashtags online to, you know, get their opinions out there and to... Um, you know, let their story be heard. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, and then one quote that I found um, in that article um, was that it stated, this march took over the Facebook platform, organizing to march as part of a human rights movement. And what I got from that is that um, this active movement was so big that it took over the platform of Facebook or Twitter, or, you know, all social media sites um, at that because this was something really big. And for women, I thought this was something really great because, you know, as women, we're always looked down upon. Um, we're always constantly fighting for our rights. So just being able uh, to let the world see how powerful us women can come together and to protest for our rights, um, that was just great seeing that that actually took over the face of Facebook for that time period. Now I want to talk a little bit more about social media and how it um, specifically affects um, the mindset of us women. Um, social media, for me personally, I can say that it gives me the opportunity to express myself when I can sometimes be shut down by my peers or, you know, the community around me. Um, it allows me to also connect with people and, um, that, you know, share some, uh, some similar interests or those who, you know, maybe have the same mindset as me, or, you know, could even give me some, uh, some people that are out there are good at giving, you know, positive, uh, feedback or motivation. And then there are some, some people out there that are pretty negative about it as well. But mainly, I think the biggest thing is that it allows us women to get um, our stories out there and it allows us to let our voices be heard. Um, so another scholarly article that played a huge um, factor in my research as far as connecting it all back to um, how social media really impacts women um, was the beauty industry influence um, women in society. And it just pretty much talked about um, like our modern day feminism and how 
um, the issues of race, culture, society, um, social class, um, sexual preference, gender identity, things like that, how it really puts a toll and it affects our everyday lives. Um, I feel as though our new uh, genre of feminism uh, relies on pretty much the voices of women to share their stories, to let their voices be heard and to, you know, get their story out there. Um, and also, um, it was a quotation that, um, I found in this article that I thought that was pretty interesting as well, as far as, um, hashtagging online. And it stated, studies have shown that people who engage in online media are more tolerant for lifestyles and values not that are not their own and are experiencing a new form of empathy known as virtual empathy. Now let's stop and kind of think about that. Um, so what I thought was interesting about this quote is when they say for lifestyles and values that are not their own. That right there is just a big portion to me of literally what we see every day on social media and how it affects our mindset. For me, um, I will see things on social media where, you know, I may adapt other people's style or, oh, she's doing this and she's getting, you know, this many likes or that many retweets or, you know, and it'll kind of, I guess, put a toll on my life and make me think like, okay, well, I have to do this or do that, you know, just to be heard or to even be noticed. So, I think a lot of a lot of women um, look at that and can agree to that statement that you know the lifestyles that they portray on social media is not necessarily their own lifestyle, but um, it is values, not even values. It's lifestyles of others that we're adapting, you know, for our own. Um, social sites like Twitter um, allows us to obviously. Um, be gathered um, by a t particular event with hashtags being used. So, um, like I stated earlier, those examples with the Washington March, um, the Texas abortion bill, you know, things like that. Um, Twitter allows you to directly connect to those events because all you have to do is just go on there, you know, click the hashtag and type in, um, you know, just whatever that event is at the time. And it will literally link you back to everyone who's tweeting, retweeting, or, you know, sharing stories for that particular event. So I think that um, is pretty interesting how that has an um, effect on the um, world as well. Um, oftentimes, the public may think that us women are very silent, you know, because society has kind of taught us to sit back and kind of be quiet and not really speak our minds or fight for what we believe. Um, but having this social media and these hashtags, it allows us uh, women to gain back our voice and it allows us to um, take more control over our thoughts and um, just our experiences. And it allows us to voice those thoughts and those stories, you know, um, and letting us still have our power and being able to control um, our words and our actions through um, simply just sending a tweet or, I mean, posting a tweet or, you know, making a Facebook status. It just still allows us um, to let our voices be heard. Now, a lot of times, you know, we kind of confide in social media as well. So, you know, there are some of us women or just people um, in general who, you know, we have the voice and we could speak up if we wanted to, but we choose not to. We choose to still put our um, put our opinions out there and kind of um, voice how we may feel about a certain event or a topic. But, you know, when it's time for that to be said and done during maybe a protest or a march, sometimes, you know, we still hide behind the scenes and um, which is fine, you know, and that's why I think that social media can definitely have a positive impact um, on us women in our society because we don't always have to um, make it to all these protests. We don't always have to um, be out there during these events and we don't have to always step up and speak our mind in a situation where, you know, maybe we really don't need to always be heard but we can always be heard on social media no matter who likes it who loves it 
you know, that's our freedom and our right is to get on there and, you know, speak our minds. So overall, I would like to say that social media gives us women a voice to be heard. Um, And like I said, it allows us to speak and have power and control over what we say when we are sometimes shut down by our peers. And that's what um, I love so much about it. And I also love how, like I said, these sites, they bring all these people together who have some of the same interests, the same stories, you know, the same uh, mindset, you know, especially with Twitter. It always brings you back to... um, it always brings you back to a specific event or a topic. And that's what I love about it. Because you, with that, it's like you never feel like you're alone. You always have someone out there that either feels the same way, that either thinks the same as you, or just, you know, it just gives you that comfort that you need. And a lot of times as women, we don't have comfort to speak up. And that's why we confide in social media. So I think that social media can definitely um, have a positive um impact on women in general um and I also believe that um this is the true power of social media the true power of social media is our stories it's what we put out there it's um what we give to the world because think about it if we're not putting out stories if we're not um tweeting our thoughts and our feelings then there's not really much Um, left in the the world of social media you know the things that we even research these scholarly articles these are articles where people put out their um, research or their opinions or their thoughts and feelings towards a specific topic and so um, I just want to say that you know overall the um, as far as the world um, women's studies and feminism when it connects to social media I think that um before it wasn't as powerful but it is definitely getting more powerful um as as you know um time goes on and i definitely think that it has more of a positive impact um when it comes to um us getting our voices out than the negatives now don't get me wrong there are the negatives as far as you know um the hurtful things we see or how things are uh, being portrayed as far as the ideal look or image that we have to um, give off to I mean that we have to give off um, but overall I would say that social media has a positive impact on us women and I think it is also safe to say that um, as women we should continue to speak out let our voices be heard and utilize these hashtags um, so that we are getting our point across So that is it. Thank you.